children which was we are learning lesson 5 you learn okay now i explain about mountains and plains in this class now i am going to explain about rivers how are the rivers in europe the rivers are used not only for irrigating fields for transport the goods also these rivers are used see page number 43 Ships and barges ply on these rivers and transport people and goods from one place to another. Since these rivers flow across several countries, there are so many rivers in Europe. If we observe in map four, which was given in this textbook, page number forty-six, you see Rhine River, Seine River, Odon, Volga River. So many rivers are there in this Danube River in this map. See this page and observe the kind of the rivers. There is or there is a or suppose here Danube River written like this Danube D A N U B Danube River River denotes for or denotes for river. You can observe observe like this Danube. Besides that the or is there. That is the river Vistula River. Okay, so many rivers. In this Europe, these rivers are used for carrying goods from one place to another. They are also facilitated international trade and transport. Through these Europe rivers, international trade and transport also going on. In this respect, the Rhine is one of the most important rivers as it flows through several countries and empties itself into North. Among these rivers, Rhine is the most important river. Through this river, several uh, important several countries uh, and other places through this river only transport is going. There are several major industrial and mining cities on the Open Sea and thus linked into. Intercontinental trade. Unlike the Rhine, the Volga drains into the Caspian Sea. Here, this is the Volga Rhine. This Volga Rhine, Volga River, is drains into the Caspian Sea. Here is the Caspian Sea. See in the textbook map. This is Volga River. This drains into drains into Caspian Sea, which is a vast lake. Which is the vast lake? Caspian Sea. This is the vast lake in Europe. Here, Volga River. This river drains into this Caspian Sea. Transport to the open sea through this river way is not possible. Thus, the cities on the Volga are not able to transport the trade through waterways. So, this uh, is not possible on this uh, river. Transport is not possible. Next come to the peninsula of Ireland, Wales, and Gales. The sea coast of Europe is very sharp. In several places, it appears that the sea has cut deep into the land. And in the case of the Baltic Sea, and one more sea is there. What is the name of the sea? Baltic Sea. Here, this is the Baltic Sea. Some areas of the sea is all uh, look like so. Uh, Deep into the land, it would appear that a part of the land has stretched far into the sea, as in the case of Italy. Here, you see page number forty-four. Here, some places given in the Europe map. These are the states uh, in Europe, continent countries given. Italy. You have seen where it is. Italy. It is in red color. Observe this. It is a red color. Italy is surrounded on three sides by the sea. Italy is surrounded by three sides of sea. So Italy is surrounded by three sides of sea is there. Land masses that are surrounded by the sea on three sides are connected to the main land on the fourth side of the peninsula. What is the peninsula? Land masses that are surrounded. Land masses that are surrounded by three fourth mainland connected to the main. Please, it's a connected to the mainland on the fourth side of the peninsula. Norway and Sweden are also part of 
Peninsula. We are given Peninsula, North and Sweden in this part only. We can check this out in the map. This peninsula is called the Scandinavian Peninsula. What it is called the Scandinavian Peninsula. The sea surrounds some of the European countries, not just on three sides, but on all four sides. These are island countries. Four sides are the connected with the water. So, this is called the island. Great Britain is one such island country. In this area, Great Britain is one such island. Great Britain. This is one such island. Since ancient times, the seas have played an important role in the lives of the people of these islands and the peninsulas. So, in this Europe, there are islands and peninsulas. So, many are there. Since ancient times, the seas have played many important roles. Central and Southern Europe is largely mountainous. In this area in Europe, central part and the southern part, largely mountainous. That means uh, these places, central part and southern part, are covered with the mountains. Travel and transport over them is both difficult and expensive. Because uh, so many mountains are there. That's why travel and transport is uh, very difficult and expensive also. In comparison, sea transport is easy and less expensive. So, they choose the no. sea transport. There is no railways or roadways because of its mountains. So many mountains are occupied, occupied in south part, southern part and central part. That, that is why they are choosing sea route for transport. So, it is very easy and less expensive. This is the reason why Europeans have been extensively using sea routes since ancient times. Since ancient times only, these people, uh, those who are living in Europe, they are dependent on the sea route. The presence of a large number of bays and guns has also facilitated the use of sea routes. Next, come to the climate. How is the climate in Europe? Europe has a cool climate. Europe has a cool climate. Most of its countries experience snowfall in winter because uh, there is so much snowfall in winter. There is sometimes cool or not as warm as ours. We have so much heat in summer, but they don't have like ours. Distance from the equator. The regions near the equator remain warm all around the year. The distance near the equator. It is warm. Throughout the year, it will be warm. As we move northwards or southwards away from the equator, it gets cooler and cooler. As we move northwards, northwards and southwards, this is the equator. As we move, move from, from equator, as we move, it gets cooler and cooler. Indeed, the polar regions are covered with ice all around the year. That's because of that. This is the equator. On this part only, equator part gets very hot. Going to North Pole and South Pole, it gets cooler. So, this part throughout the year cool. Polar regions are covered with ice all around the year. So, here, which is the North Pole and South Pole polar regions, they are covered with ice. So, these are covered with the Ice throughout the year. Next, coming to the Atlantic Ocean. The climate of Europe is influenced by another factor, the Atlantic Ocean and the winds blowing from it. This impact is felt more by the regions along the Atlantic Oceans than the ones which are far inland. In the winters, it is quite cold in Western Europe, but it is even colder in Eastern Europe. Winters, how, how are winters? Winters are quite cold in Western Europe. But it is even colder in Eastern Europe. Western Europe is colder. Even Eastern Europe is also cold. Thus, countries like Poland and Russia have severe winters while France and Great Britain are comparatively warmer. Here, Poland and Russia are very cool. Whereas, France and Great Britain are very warm. 
Russian rivers are so cold that the rivers and the nearby seas freeze. Because Russian rivers are freezing. However, this does not happen in the countries of Western Europe that are located along the sea coast. You will have guessed that this difference must be because of the nearness of the Western Europe to the Atlantic Ocean. Because uh, this part is near to the Atlantic Ocean. Let us see exactly how this ocean affects the climate of uh, Europe. In the next class, uh, we will learn the effects of the climate of uh, Europe.